welcome back to the class everyone double drops are once again upon us and it is more important than ever that we get our hoarding schedule correct because this time around they only last for one day <laughs> So before we get into the whole hoarding strategy of how, when, why, etc., I do want to explain a little bit where this is coming from and when this is happening. CG is going to be giving us a number of goodies starting on October 30th, ending November 3rd, and very specifically on November 3rd are the double drops. Now it doesn't say it here, but this is important. This is only going to be for normal and fleet energy nodes. So do not mod your mod and cantina. I know it doesn't specify it here, but it is going to be normal and fleet energy only. And again, before we do get to all of the how and the why, I do want to give a little shout out to CG here. They have been working with Extra Life and have been raising a lot of money for this charity. For anyone who wants to know more about it, I will leave a link in the description below. I only mention that because the reason why cg is doing all these goodies right now is because the amount that the community has raised so that's really kind of cool all right so now getting over to the double drops anyone who's watched my channel before you probably have already seen a spreadsheet similar to this but this one's going to look a little bit different and there are a few reasons why number one we have less energies and number two i want to start taking into account the amount of daily energy you need as well or at least show you an example of what mine looks like so again for those of you who are not familiar with these types of videos the best source or the best economy in game to progress your account is by using crystal refreshes wisely so the whole concept behind this is that since double drops only last for a total of one day we are going to be pumping through these crystal refreshes days prior sitting on that hoard and then spending everything once the double drops day actually hits for a higher net profit if anyone really wants to check the math on it it's not all that hard but i also have it here this here kind of shows assuming you're doing 50 crystal refreshes per day which you really should depending on your crystal income i realize not everyone can do that but if you have the ability to do it you should be doing that this is how much crystals you would get in day or not crystals energy you would get in day per normal and fleet you will notice normal is a little bit higher because there are more opportunities to get that bonus 45 energy throughout the day but this right here is taken in consideration the 240 that is accruing naturally throughout the day it is also taken into consideration those 50 crystal refreshes totaling 360 energy total and then on top of that the 45s that i just previously mentioned so one thing to take into account is when we hoard we stop the natural accruing process of energy as you can see at the very top of the screen right now my energies are accruing they're all below 144. once they hit 144 or above for that matter they will stop gaining extra energy so this gives you the appearance that you're losing and or missing out this is not true when you're hoarding for double jobs so if we look at the math here you are losing every day that you hoard you're losing 240 energy that you would normally be getting however all of the hoarded energy that you are getting from the 50 crystal refreshes as well as the 45s you are going to be able to use it for double and you are going to end up gaining more energy by the end of this or rather more energy value by the end of this because you're going to be using all the stuff that you were stock holding and get it for double the value later and as you can see this even has a real crystal value per day every day that you do this this is the amount of crystals you're essentially gaining assuming that's how the energy works so with that being said that's why you should hoard now how you should hoard is going to be a little bit different so november 3rd is the magic day that is the day that we just need to immediately spend everything so that's the magic day the day before is the day that we need to have our hordes completely maxed and this is important to note because both normal as well as fleet energy they have limits as to how high you can refresh them at a certain point they will literally you'll go in here you'll click the purchase button it will say no you can't do it you need to spend it so our goal is to get right up to that limit pretty much the night before the double drops actually hit so in order to do that we need to get to 2199 the reason why normal energy has a limit of 2000 so what we want to do is get it like to 1999 and then buy the last refresh again the night before double drops hit for fleet it is actually only a thousand energy that we can have so we want to get it to one less of that so 999 
and then buy the final refresh. So in order to get that math perfectly right, I have made this table. So if the night before double drops, so which is November 2nd, you need to have these numbers. These are the exact numbers you need to have. If you want to start hoarding before that, and you should to be able to get maximum value, this is what the number should look like on, on November 1st. You'll notice the difference between these two numbers right here is the amount of energy that on the 1st of November you will gain from doing all of your refreshes as well as getting the 45s and kind of just so on and so forth on the 31st this is where your energy needs to be and on the 30th this is where your energy needs to be you'll notice that there are different start days for both normal and fleet energy the reason for that is that normal is much higher so you need to start um, hoarding earlier as early, as early really as the 29th and we'll get to that in a little bit but for most people you'll be good to start in the 30th for normal energy and then the 31st for fleet energy so again to properly understand this the night before or really the night of each of these days this is what your energy should look like now there is one fairly giant caveat to all this one of the things that you might want to have a little bit of extra padding energy wise is to be able to complete your daily activities. Now, I don't have them right here to share. It probably would have been really cool if I did, but most of you are aware that in this daily activity section right here, you will have a few missions that you need to complete. You need to do six um, light side or dark side battles. You need to do five hard battles. You need to do three fleet battles. If you're going all in on the hoarding, like we previously described, you will not be able to complete these missions. And not only will you not be able to do that, but you won't be able to get the prize box at the end of the day. So if we're truly trying to be efficient, we need to factor in the extra energy that we will need per day to be able to do that. And if by this point in the video, you're like, all right, Calvin, this is like too hard. I'm not doing this. Like this is too much math. Just do what we said before, spend your energy as needed. You will not be the most efficient player ever in the world, but you'll still get pretty good value out of this, okay? So, you know, hit these numbers as best you can, spend the energy that you need to hit your dailies and call it a day. But if you're really trying to maximize efficiency and trying to squeeze every little piece of crystal value that you can here, I have put together this bottom chart and this is not going to work for everyone, but this is specifically what is going to work for me. So I want to have 90 extra energy per day so that I can not only farm Nisa five times and be able to get all that, but also do one Chirotech node. The reason why I want all six of those is because you need six light side or dark side battles to be able to complete the daily activity. And then I have 60 energy and that'll just be three um, farming of scouts node that costs 23 times. So once I factor those numbers in here, all I've done, and a very simple formula here, I've taken the above numbers and I've added the amount of energy times the amount of days. So on the 30th, I really need to have 904 energy stored away. That will give me enough to be able to not only have this really fancy number of 2,119 by the end, but it'll also allow me to have 90 energy, normal energy, to get all of my dailies done. So you can see here that number does tick down as the days go along. I only need 90 of it at the end of November 1st to spend on November 2nd. On October 31st, I need 180 of it so that I have some to spend here and here and kind of so on and so forth. So I realize that does make this more complicated, but again, from a peak efficiency standpoint, it's kind of what I want to do. And then the very same thing is happening here with the 60 energy. We've added in 60 energy here and then i know that i need 120 plus to cover the two days that are going to be coming now there is one slight problem with this for calvin not necessarily for anyone else because this magic number here of 90 energy per day or 60 energy per day that is going to vary per user for me it's exactly 90 because i want to hit my five anisa um sims for her and then one chirotech for anyone else, it might not look like that. That might do a normal 10 energy node. I think Crex was on like a 12 or something like that. So that this can vary a little bit. For some people, for fleet battles, they'll just go and they'll find the cheapest fleet node for eight and do it three times. So instead of 60, it'll be 24. And then the whole formula here kind of changes. That being all that kind of aside, there is one glaring problem here. And that is the fact that if I can only get 735 energy per day, 70, 735 is less than 904. So in reality, to get most value here, I would actually need to start hoarding on the 29th, which is the day this is being posted. I'm not gonna do that, number one, sounds like a lot of work. And number two, the chances of me getting normal energy, bonus energy from the web store across these five days is probably pretty good. 
So I'm just going to kind of use that as a measure to help me out. And by the way, if you do get fleet or normal energy, just kind of spend as needed. Or if you, you know, made a wrong call at a certain point, maybe you can use it to hoard extra. I didn't want to necessarily include that in here because while I'm kind of in my situation a little bit banking on it, it's not a guarantee. I mean, you could get Cantina energy every single time. And I mean, that would be great, actually. I, lo I do love Cantina energy, but it does kind of affect the overall hoarding process. Now, some people might also be asking what they should spend when the day does come around. And I won't spend a lot of time on this because the answer is typically pretty simple. You should just go in and farm whatever you're currently farming, whether that be character shards or otherwise. But one of the nodes that I like for peak efficiency for light side battles is this guy right here. I, I've talked about this a hundred times. I'll talk about a hundred times more because it is great. Not only do you get Kyrotech, which I need sorely. It's one of the few things holding me back from getting Galactic Legend Lair right now. But you also get MK5 Fabrotech data pad. The name doesn't really matter. But the reason why this piece matters is because this has some of the highest value for bronzium wiring, which is, again, another bottleneck for myself and for a lot of people out there. And then as a bonus, I'm pretty sure this actually gets used somewhere else. But the really two important things are the Kyrotech piece as well as the data pad. So that has a lot of value. So I want to be getting double that every single time. So that's where I will be going for normal energy. Now for fleet energy, there are two specific nodes that I want to call out to. The first one is actually a pretty cheap node of eight energy that again, you know, do your hard battles first. But then when you're trying just to burn through your 1000 energy that you hoarded, this node is great if you need relic salvage. This right here is the same exact piece that we just looked at that is great bronzium value. And then on top of that, this can be used for carbonized circuit boards. It's not really good value, but that's not why you're here. You're, you're here for this guy right here. And if you're like, all right, Calvin, I don't really care about salvage. I need more gear 12s. This is a really good value node. Not only do you get the furnaces, which are needed for a, a number of characters, as you guys can see down here below, but we also do have some nice pieces in here that can also be used for relic salvage. And then I, I guess nothing else really matters. But yeah, you used to get the nice piece to get some relic salvage. And then if you don't, if you're really short with your MK2 currency, you can use that to buy all of your other gold pieces and you can kind of just let furnaces stay where they are by farming this node or, or for, at a minimum just for the one day. So thank you guys for watching. Let me know if you have any questions down below. Until the next time, stay awesome.